All right, friends, it's Teen. I'm back with a video. Uh, I guess you could call this Q&A time. So I'm going to try to answer a comment in the comment section of this video that I did Q&A uh, for somebody called Alter Destiny, myofibular training. They were asking me something. Okay, like I said before, I'm not... I don't do videos anymore on any kind of training. That was on my old channel before it was taken down by YouTube. So in this channel, I simply am, ex I'm simply doing slave videos, or you could say li lifting slave videos, or gym slave, fitness slave videos. Basically, uh, yeah, just telling people what they're getting. These people that are lifting slaves. I'm just, I'm just according to their training. I'm just telling people with science and and, and some stuff. This is, this is what they're getting according to their training. That's all. That's really all I'm doing, but I'm gonna answer your question. So based on these principles, it seems like it could make sense to just work a different muscle one time a week, like a bro split for like 20 to 30 minutes intensely. No, it's not gonna work, man. It just, it just doesn't, man. I can't explain it to you. Your body's really, it's, it's funny. It, 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 it works in certain ways. It can give you things if you know how to, if you know how to manipulate the human body, it can give you what you want, providing you know how to manipulate it. You can't ask it to give you muscles. It's not going to say, "Hey, man, you're not going to give a conver have a conversation with your body." Hey, body, uh, could you just, you know, build me some muscles, man? I'll, I'll go and just move around some weights in the gym. I'll be comfortable. I'll, I'll move them around comfortably and have fun and do full range and all that. Look cute and pretty. And I'll wear my my outfit, my gear, my my nice cute gear with my tight shirt that I bought at, at, at uh, what is it? My uh, a small medium shirt or whatever, my small shirt. I bought at um, Old Navy, whatever. Wear it in the gym and look all cute and everything. No, it doesn't work like that, bro. Just doesn't work like that. I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't describe it to you. You wouldn't understand it. <clears throat> so yeah, 20 to 30 minutes intensely, breaking it down and giving it a week to recover. What about the other body parts? That's the problem. You understand me? My concern for doing all upper, all, all upper body in one day is that you could become like an endurance athlete doing all these sets and take four hours to do a workout. Well, let me get this straight. Let's say I don't, I don't do really four hours. Uh, when I was younger, I could manage really fast and I like, I don't know, maybe two and a half, the max three hours. Now I'm actually doing it quite quick. Maybe the most, maybe three hours because I put a lot of effort into it because I'm a lot older now. I don't know. <clears throat> so how could you be an endurance athlete if you're working out once a week? Endurance is somebody that is working out chronically. This is periodic. How could you be uh, how could you be an endurance athlete? That's this is ridiculous. Do you understand me? And you'll have during that week you could load some glycogen wh while you're going through the repair and remodeling. Look, I explained to you like this. When you do your helper body, you're able to damage the muscle fibers. They damage a lot easier, all of them. Because there's something called a repeat about effect. It starts protecting muscles from being damaged. Even throughout that session, when you reach the fourth hour, that's it. It's over. It's going to be almost impossible to damage anything. So that window, I would say, is a three-hour window. you got to move very quickly through your, through, through your movements. And you got to cause as many damage, damages or micro injuries to these muscle fibers as many as you can in that session. And then you go eat for four hours. I don't know where you go, but you eat, like you just eat repetitively nonstop. And I mean a lot. All right? Because you're going through a necrosis now. You don't want to go through an ap apoptosis. So you need to eat. And then the next day, you still need to eat. And then after that, you still got to keep eating. But you don't have to eat so much after the first two days. They're, the, they're really the most important time to eat is right after your workout. That's the biggest, that's the biggest one. But I would definitely eat protein before I come in the gym. A lot of protein before I start breaking down these, these muscle fibers. <clears throat> okay, so you say here, plus whatever is in the second half of your workout would get much less effort because you'd be fatigued. Hence, you wouldn't break down the muscle as well. Is that not logical? No, you don't become fatigued. What you have in the DOM section, part one, is reduced force capacity is what happens to you. When muscles start getting broken down, you get something called this. I'll show you. So in DOMS part one, this is you could you could find this in PubMed. 
All right, delayed onset muscle soreness. <clears throat> so it's an ultrastructural muscle injury. So what's going to happen is this. You're going to get clinical signs, clinical signs of reduced. Signs include reduced force capacities, increased painful restriction of movement, stiffness, a bit of swelling is already going to start coming on, and dysfunction of adjacent joints. You're going to get reduced force capacity as you're going through the movements because these muscles are going to injure. They're going to injure. When you do your chest, you're going to do your back. When you do your chest, you're doing your shoulders, back, and your arms, and your back. When you do your back, you're doing your shoulders, chest, back, and shoulders and arms and this and that, get it? So that's the reason why you're doing whole upper body because everything is getting fucking overworked. It's an overworking of an untrained muscle. Get it, bro? I call it untrained, maybe you can call it unfamiliar or unaccustomed. Let's say the muscle is unaccustomed to, do, I, I prefer to say unaccustomed. Let's say overtraining of an unaccustomed muscle. It's not accustomed to doing that, to having it all fucking bashed in one shot. So yeah. That's what's going to happen. And then I'll tell you what happens. Currently considered to be ultra structural damage to muscle cells. So what is this? It's the, it's the, un, the primary mechanism is currently considered to be the ultra structural damage of what? Muscle cells due to what? Unfamiliar sporting activities or eccentric exercise. And it's going to be eccentric, trust me. <laughs> it's going to break down, which leads to further protein degradation. Of course, yeah. You get a apoptosis, a local inflammatory response. These muscles, are, they're, they're injured, bro. Like it says here, it says ultrastructural muscle injury right there at the top. See that manifestation of DOMS is caused by what? Eccentric and unfamiliar forms of exercise. If you're familiar with anything, you're adapted. You understand me? You're adapted. Now, you want an adaptation? Unfamiliar forms. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you just, you don't, you, I don't know. I, you want me to confirm some fake belief of yours? I'm not going to confirm your fake beliefs, okay? So, um, plus, whatever in the second half the workout would be, get much less because you'd be fatigued. No, like I said, you're not fatigued. There's no fatigue. You're not going to be fatigued. You're not going to be fatigued. You have pent-up energy. You haven't worked out for an entire week. Hello? It's, you're going to be gung-ho, ready to go. You're going to be, like, fucking destroying muscle like crazy, moving through fucking exercises like, like a maniac. Hence, you wouldn't break down a muscle as well. No, you'll break it down as well. Trust me, you're going to have a lot of power when you come in that week to knock shit down, especially if you're a young person. Because in your mind, you're just thinking growth. You want to fucking be like a monster. You want to destroy fibers and get them to rebuild bigger, better, stronger, and faster. Your mentality has to be a warrior mentality. If you don't have that, forget it, bro. Then you wrote me a second, a second paragraph. I'm just uh, saying hours two, three, four of your workout will be less effective. How do you know it would be less effective? Did you try any of this? So why not, so why not bro split it? I don't know, why don't you tell me why I should bro split it? Why wouldn't it be effective? Why would it working out, breaking all these muscle fibers in one shot so I can get over the repeated bout effect and have it not, uh, not adapt and then I can't break down any more muscle fibers it's adapted now there's no more damage and I'm not building any muscle so what would be the point exactly you explain that to me do you have experience doing it so here's a, here's a, here's the thing before you write something before you do something I suggest you go out and try it yourself and you figure it out why you should do a bro split and why you should do it the way I say it but that's up to you okay you could figure it out your, yourself you're a genius you're smart, right? Like I said, I'm not here to confirm people's fake beliefs. That's why my channel cannot be popular with any of you. I use real science. I use real bodybuilding. I use real modalities. I don't use anything fake on my channel. I've never faked anything on my channel. Never. I've never done fake lifts. I didn't build fake muscles or anything like that. I did do sarcoplasmic one time as a, on my old channel to show people this is sarcoplasmic but i never lied about it i never lied i always said this is sarcoplasmic 20 pounds of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy training okay so there you go i never i never cheated anybody i never i didn't bring out fake reports something ncbi i fabricated them or something like that i didn't fake anything on my channel so i so you say so why not the, because it doesn't work the blow split the, the bro splits Still giving one muscle a week to recover after being damaged. Take this, no, this, no, that's, you need to go through a repair and walling. It's a trick, you're tricking your body, okay? 
you're you're tricking your body. Let's say I stay. Let's say I stand up against the wall with my with my calves bent up against the wall, and I stand there for four or five hours, and it's in a stretched position. What do you think is going to happen to the muscles in my calves? They're stretched. They're stretched. This is an abnormal condition to be in. What would my body do? What would my body do? What would it do if I, I stand there in a stretch position? What would it do to the calves? Well, I'll tell you what's gonna do. It's gonna give you new fibers. It's gonna lay it down because say, what the fuck's going on here? Your body's gonna say, what the fuck is going on here? That we're in a stretch position. This is crazy. We need to get stronger. How do we get stronger? We need to add more myofibulars so we can take the tension off the other myofibulars because we're in a stuck straight, uh, a stuck, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, stretched position. This is crazy. You understand me? Yeah, it's uncomfortable. It would be uncomfortable to, to sit like that up against the wall or on the floor with your legs bent and in a stretched position. You understand me? It would be uncomfortable. I don't know. For some, maybe yes. Some yes, some no. Martial art, artists do this. They're, they, don't, they don't complain about it. And they know how to get these myofibulars. It's called hyperplasia. But that's through a stretch without causing damage to the myofibular. But however, here's the problem. Like it says in NCBI, put in my community section, uh, there's some section there, it tells you, it says that <coughs> you can get minor damage and severe damage. That minor damage would be just a donation of the satellite cells or the nuclei to, to that fiber with, without an additional fiber being, being created. But if the damage is severe, I mean severe, massive, then you're gonna get a do you're gonna get a donation of nuclei to the cracks in the domes in the fiber, and it will create another fiber based on the first one, the genetics of the first one. That's how it works, man. And no, these are all undistinguishable. The damaged fibers in science it says it's undistinguishable. That's why people say, oh, scar tissue formation, muscle scar tissue formation. Now, once those cells melt into those myofibers, they look exactly like a myofiber. When you put them under a microscope, you can't differentiate. You can't different. You can't tell the difference between one and the other that's been damaged. Okay, so yeah. But anyways, like I said, that's just how it works. You have to do it all in one shot. I don't know. Something you've got to figure out. And if you want more adaptations, do short range eccentric exercises because you're able to lift heavier for a short range of motion doing many repetitions. Look, bodybuilding is about doing heavy weight and as many repetitions as you can heavy to cause micro injuries to the fiber. So then they can rebuild bigger, better, stronger, and faster through a repair and remodeling. Blood levels are elevated. Protein synthesis is extended for that entire week when the muscle is going through a repair and a remodeling phase. That's it. And you need to eat. Protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown. That's how you build muscle. Now, if you wanna build sarcoplasmic muscles, it's really easy. Glycogen synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown. And then you'll keep loading more glycogen in there. And you'll get these phony muscles phonier than the last time. Get it, bro? That's it. It's really fucking simple. It isn't really hard. It's not rocket science. It's not hard to understand that stuff, bro. So, yeah. Let me know uh, what you think there. I don't know. You can write something in the comment section. I don't know if I missed something. I don't think so. But, uh, yeah. My friends, uh, I gotta go. Like, subscribe, comment down below. It helps the algorithm. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say there. It just, it just is like that. I don't know. Some things just work the way they work. They just are like that. And there's nothing you can do about it. So if you think a lazy workout, going to the gym, chronically lifting, is going to magically build you a myofibular, you have to be imagining things in your brain. You're in a la-la land, imagination. You're on Mars somewhere, planet Mars. Me, I'm on planet Earth. And on planet Earth, things work the way they work. That's it, bro. I know it's very hard for you to understand. That's why in all these channels, all they keep telling you is hypertrophy. You're going to hypertrophy. Yeah, but there's many types of hypertrophy. Which one is it? Ask that question. You need to question everything. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, friend.